So you will remember in a previous video, it might have been last week, it might have been the week before, I came to look at this job where uh, Dave the carpenter wanted two radiators fit in on a system that has already been drained down, a plumber's been in here previously. We came out, looked at the job, we gave the price to the customer for it and they accepted it. So we're back here today to crack on and get these rads done. So I will walk you through the job. Dave and Nigel are still here. Oh, Continuity Hello. wise, this is the next day filming it, but it's probably a week later when this video is going out. So they have finished by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, the way these tiles are going, I'll still be here next year. Well, a nightmare, aren't they? Oh. Loads of different sizes. All three different colours are all different sizes. So trying to put a spacer in between each one is a nightmare. Absolutely nightmare. Tilers. Well, wow, Dave's not a tiler, but. Always seems to be issues with tilers or tiling. I think it's trickier than plumbing. Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. Tonight's video is a follow up to a video I did, it was either last week or the week before. I can't remember because. I'm all over the shop with timings on my videos at the minute. It was the one where we went out to have a look at the job where the heating system hadn't been filled up. The customer couldn't get hold of the previous plumber. So I sort of inherited the job. I gave the customer a price. He was happy with it. Gave the customer a price of 300 quid. He was happy with it with a caveat that if I was filling it up and there was an issue with the previous plumber's work, then obviously that was going to be a little bit extra. I put a link above to that video because it was quite interesting. I compared pricing jobs to hourly rate on jobs and a lot of people commented about how they would have gone about it. But this is the video about that job. We got there in the end. Um, it's for Dave Bishop, a carpenter that's done a little bit of work with me. And as I go into this job, he's tiling so... Do you think I'm going to get these two rads done, filled up, the valves upstairs done, everything I need to do before Dave finishes the tiling in this kitchen on this job? So take a look. As always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Really do appreciate everybody getting subscribed to the channel. It just means that I can you know, push the channel a little bit more and it reaches so many more people. I've had a lot of comments from... Uh, new subscribers to the channel saying i've only just come across your channel it got linked in the algorithms of youtube however it does um but they're really enjoying it so hit the like button hit the subscribe button drop me a comment below whether you think dave is going to get the tiling done before we get the job done so this job if you remember customer is having a radiator here a radiator over there there's a comedy boiler in here at the minute and when I came to look at it the other week it was completely drained down. Dave said to me there's been a bathroom upstairs, a couple of rads gone on upstairs but the customer couldn't get hold of the previous plumber. Now straight away it makes you go why has the system been left drained down? Has he just left it drained down because he knew, knew he was coming back and something's happened and he can't come back or is there an issue? So we put a price in with a caveat of saying if there's a problem when we fill it up it's obviously nothing to do with this. So We've got the two radiators. We're going to get these on the wall, connect up. This one's obviously going center of the window. We've got the pipe work here. You can put the hose onto there and just make sure the system is completely drained. Connect that one up. This one is going here, a couple of pipes there. Connect it up. And then we're going to refill the system. Touch wood over here. Touch wood, it's all right. To be honest, I don't think there's going to be anything wrong. Apparently when Dave first came out to the job, the heating was on. So I imagine it's fine. But Let's get these radiators hung on the wall and then we can start seeing what's going on with the pipe work. So we got that rad hung on the wall. I'm just about to hang this one and I thought loads of people asked me how is the best way to hang a rad. This is the way I do it. So on here we're having a five inch skirting from the floor to the bottom of the skirting. So I always allow two inches over it. So from the floor to the bottom of the rad is going to be seven inches. So what I do then is I'll just pop the camera there so you can see it. The way I do it is I'll then offer the bracket into place like so onto the struts that it's going to be hanging on and then I'll measure from the floor to the bottom uh, from the floor to the top of the bracket which is in inches 19 and a half inches. So we then add our seven inches onto the bottom of there so we come up seven inches, 
and then we're 19 and a half off there. So what's that? 26 and a half inches from the floor to the top. Level that through, and obviously your uprights be where your brackets are. And then that will work out exactly where your brackets are going to go. Pop your bracket on there, mark round it, get it screwed to the wall. So as I say, we came to this system, it was completely drained down. We've got the two rads hung now, that one's on. It's got the valves put in it yet. This one's ready to go on. There's an isolation valve on this pipe, so it makes more sense to just crack it open to see if all the water is out of the system. I imagine it will be, but we shall have a look. See what's going on. Yeah, completely empty. So that's the high point. We'll shut that one off. And then what I'll do is, I'll uh, get the wet vac on it, pop these cap ends off, and just see if there's any water coming down them. 22 more drops that are coming down in the corner. So, because the floor hasn't gone in yet, we're just gonna pop this off and get ready. Just bang my thumb on the end. It's a little bit of water, there's no pressure in it though. <laughs> We'll just suck out anything that is still in there, just to make life a little bit easier. Yeah. Not a lot in there at all. So we'll pull the bung off the end of that one as well. We'll get the valves made up into this rad, and then all we've got to do is just come along. I'll pop some clips on that skirting. To be fair, Dave is box skirting out anyway, so it's all going to be hidden, but we'll pop some clips on, run it along, Pop that one up into that valve, do the same with that side. Um, now this is probably a prime opportunity, if it was just dripping out a little bit, it'd be perfect for the press fit fittings to go on there. As I've said before, I've never used press fit, I've never even had a go with it. I think once, I've done one joint with it at an um, installer show, I think. So, I said it a while ago, I must try and hook up with someone local to me who uses press fit and just maybe spend a day with them doing some press fit work just to see how it goes really, because I've never even tried it. In, I don't, I personally don't like the look of the fittings. I think they're a bit bulbous, but in a plant room or airing cupboard or whatever, it works perfectly. But yeah, something like this, it'd be perfect for it because it's being boxed in. Um, but we'll solder it up. We'll get the get the paint off there, a bit of wire wool on there. Same that side, <clears throat> run it along and get it connected up. So we've got a little bit of water out the return there bringing the flow along here, or I assume the flow, flow or return, one of the two. We're bringing this along here, gonna put obviously a T on there, coupler on here, and get up, and Dave's bringing the box in to about here, so I'm gonna poke out, just out about here, a little drain off, so when they put the boxing in, at least if ever we need to drain it down, we can get it to that. Yes, it is on the, on the top, and you've got the lower one on the bottom, but it's gonna drain down enough for us, if ever need be, to, to take the rods off and whatnot. So we'll pop a coupler on there, coupler on there, bit of pipe, off a T, there, and then connect it up into the TRV. So that's that radiator on now. As I said, we just poked up a little stab out for the drain off because they're gonna put the box skirt in around to there. So that one's on, connected up. We're gonna crack on with this one now. So we've got the brackets on the wall for this rad. We're gonna hang it here. And I've marked on the wall here just where the valve's gonna be. So this pipe, this side is in position. We can come off there. But this one, we're gonna have to cut probably about here and run along like so to where the valve's gonna be on the other side. Because there's a fair bit of movement in that, I'm gonna sort of wedge it out here, cut it probably here, and then solder 
that bit of pipe on and then it's pushed back into the wall similar sort of position to where that one is so let's wedge that in so what i'll do a little trick with the talon clip is pop that clip on there like so stop it retracting back in and then we can cut it here solder that length of pipe on and work from there so i finally got that one soldered up it was a bit of a pain i couldn't get the water out so i ended up lifting it as high as i could this side lifting this end as high as i could and luckily it went but i know people are going to go this is where you should have press fit fittings to do that but at the end of the day it took me about five minutes just faffing around a little bit and it's done so we've got both those pipes now going either side we drop the rad onto position um, and then begin to get it piped up so that's the rad on we're just going to put two little kicks on two bits of pipe there both sides up and into the valves now I've just recently picked up this new bender because the bender I did have, a Rothenberg bender, and it was kinking, 20, especially 22 mil pipe, it was kinking that if I was ever pulling a bend. So I had a bit of a look round. Now, this is from a company, Bend It Now, British made, based in Sheffield. Now these, if they look familiar to some of the older people watching the channel, these are the company that used to make the Hillmore benders back in the day and they bought the rights when Hillmore, I think Hillmore sold out to someone else. Um, is it Hillmore Irwin? Sold out to them. Um, but this is basically a Hillmore bender from back in the day, just rebranded as Bend It Now. So I bought one of these, obviously it comes with two slides, but anyone who had a Hillmore back in the day will notice it looks exactly the same, same colour. Even this bit there used to have embossed Hillmore into it and it is bang on. I've been using it a couple of weeks. I was meaning to mention it on video and this is the first sort of opportunity I've had to do it. So yeah, I'll put the link in the description to the company, Bend It Now, British made, British made company. I think they're based in Sheffield, but yeah, can't fault that bender at all. And it's just nice to have one that looks like the old school ones we used to have back in the day. So on that note, we'll get some kicks, put on a bit of pipe and get this piped up. So those are those two rads on now connected, piped up, ready to be filled up. But what we've got to do before we do anything else is pop upstairs with these two TRVs because when the plumber, whoever the plumber was beforehand, put two new radiators up here, he only put lock shield valves on with no thermostatic valve in this room or in the other room. So what we'll do, we'll whip off this one this side, put a TRV on there, and then the same with that one down there and then we can get ready to fill this system up and remember i've come to this house and the system is completely drained down so we'll get this done and then we'll get everything prepped and ready to put some water in the system what i'll do is fill it up leave the tower rail turned off make sure everything's all right then we'll put some inhibitor in the tower rail and run the rest of the system up but first of all let's get some trvs put on these bedroom rooms. So what we do is whip this valve off. As I said, the system is, well, to be fair, that weren't even tight. So I better, while I'm here, check all the other valves as well. Just to make sure. Just to make sure they're all okay. So, so there's a little bit of water in here, as you can see. So we've got the wet vac, let's suck out the rest of that water. <laughs> so with the water out of that, let's just pop a bit of paste on because there was no paste on that side of the valve. Ready for this to go on and let's whip out this towel. Put this tail out, put the new one in. Got a new one here, taped up. Get 
the nut and olive on. Again, put a smidgen of paste around there. Wash it, wipe it clean afterwards. And get our thermostatic valve on. static valve on that side now I'm going to go around and check the other one for tightness and then we'll get the other one on that far end rad and then we can get ready to fill the system up right there we go that is them two rads done now all sorted all connected up tightened I've made sure the drain offs off tightened everything up um, we've also put the two TRV valves on these two rads up here so that's now got a TRV. The other bedroom's now got a TRV. I'm going to isolate the towel rod because what I'm going to do is put the inhibitor in here once we know the system's fine. So what we'll do now, we'll go downstairs, begin filling the system up, checking the rads, checking hopefully that there's no signs coming through the ceiling of any issues. I don't think there will be. And then we can pop some inhibitor into this towel rail, open it up, and we know the system's then got inhibitor in it and it all is well. So let's get this shut off and begin filling the system up. So it's going to be Andy Dave's here. He can be the man on the lever. You're right filling this up, Dave. Oh, is it coming out of your 300 pound budget? <laughs> so Dave's going to man the uh, the valve. We're going to top it up, put about a, a bar of pressure in it to begin with, and then make sure there's no leaks coming anywhere, and we're all good. So do you want to flick that on, Dave? Just turn that valve. And then we should have water beginning to go into the system. So let's open that valve up. And let's go. get a little plum chum on there. Open the lock shield. You can hear the water beginning to go in. I'm not going to vent it just yet. I'm just going to pressurise it up. Make sure everything is okay. Okay, the water beginning to go into here. Let's have a quick look upstairs to make sure everything's okay up here. Let's just open that and just, yeah. I'll leave that off for now. Just wanted to make sure it was pressurising up. The same with this one. Yeah. So we'll let the system pressurise up now, get it to about a bar, bar and a half, go around, check for any leaks, see, make sure it doesn't drop, and then we can fill the rest of the system up. So we've had a bit of pressure in the system for a while now. I've just vented these two downstairs rads, and let's top that back up. Do you still want one and a half? Yeah. Yep, it's on one and a half. So we'll go and vent the rads upstairs now. And just get the air out of them now it's been pressurised up. So the towel rail's shut off. So let's continue to vent. Feel the water going in. So we'll fill this one up, fill the other one up. And then I'll go and grab some inhibitor out of the van, pop it in the towel rail, fill that one up as well. Then we can get some heat on, heat test it. Make sure everything's okay. So now with the system completely filled up, we left the towel rail off because we're going to add some inhibitor into this. Now, this system has only got one, two, three, four, five, five rads. Um, inhibitor is usually a 500 ml bottle, usually says, always double check, but usually says it can do a 100 litre system up to 10 radiators. So clearly, if I put all of that in, I'm overdosing the system with inhibitor. So I'm going to put about 250 mil worth of inhibitor into this system. So all we've got to do, because we're drying down, is pop the vent plug out the top and pour 250 mil of inhibitor into there, pop the drain plug back in, open it up, vent it, 
and then that is our inhibitor into the system. And just pop it in. 250ml of this inhibitor. Just check on the side. A little bit more. Perfect. There we go. So we'll pop the vent plug, bash on this power rail, get it tightened up, and open the valves up and give it a vent. Get the air out of it, and we'll turn the heating on and get heat testing these rats. So there we go, all done, dusted, finished. But I know the big question that everyone wants to know is, while I've been doing that, has Dave finished the tiling? Nearly. Nearly, one more. Is that the last bit? Last bit in there, look. There you go. So yeah. Does it look too bad either? No, it looks all right, that. Yeah, there you go. Right. So, that's it, all sorted. Rad's on, system filled up. There wasn't any problems with it. I didn't think there was gonna be, but you've always got to cover your ass, in essence. So, yeah, another little job, done and dusty. Yeah.